ان الحمد لله نحمد ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد Before we start off with anything, I want to remind you all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only loves you, but He has chosen you. He has favored you if He has allowed you to see the holy month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has closed the gates of the hellfire and He has opened the gates of paradise. So if you are someone who is still doing evil things within the month of Ramadan just know that you are self sabotaging yourself. You are doing everything and Allah is preventing that from happening. But you yourself are approaching in the wrong direction. So this Ramadan I want you to focus on the fact that the gates of paradise are open so take advantage of that. Stay away from all the evil deeds and the harmful things that are stopping you and pulling you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and push your self towards that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. Just know that this Ramadan is an opportunity for you to get closer to Allah. And I want to talk to you about how you can prepare for this Ramadan. How you can improve and make this the best Ramadan that you've ever had. Just like many of you have family members who are preparing for the month of Ramadan by purchasing food, perhaps clearing the freezer out, making foods and preparations, getting ready to celebrate the month of Ramadan and make sure that you are prepared for the month of Ramadan. The same way that you have prepared and prepped for the food, the same way that you have prepared and prepped for other various things for the month of Ramadan, you must also prepare to receive the blessings of the month of Ramadan. In order for you to receive and prepare for the month of Ramadan spiritually, emotionally, mentally, you have to clear your heart of all malice. You have to remove your Uh, grudges and harmful things that your heart is harboring in order for you to make room for the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bestow upon us in this month of Ramadan. But you cannot receive those blessings if your mind and your spirit and your emotionally not prepared to receive those blessings. Prepare to receive the blessings of the month of Ramadan by removing the grudges that you hold in your heart for other people. Remove the grudges and the malice that you hold towards other people who might have done something to you as a mistake, but you're still holding on to the anger that you have towards them. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about a man, a companion, who has promised paradise. Now amongst the other companions, this companion was not known for his Saum, he's not known for his Qiyam. He was just a regular companion, as basic as that might sound. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called and said, such and such is from paradise. So when other companions heard this, they asked themselves, who is this person so beloved and special to Allah Azza wa Jal that he is promising, guaranteed in paradise? So they did their research. They checked on what he was doing that was so special. They saw and observed him, his habits, that he's not praying anything extra. He's not up in the night doing these extra things. His fasts are pretty normal as everyone else is. So why is he so special? Why is he chosen and said that he is amongst paradise? So eventually they just approached the companion and they explained what they heard the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say about them. And he himself was baffled. He said, I don't know myself. But there is one thing that I do that is perhaps the reason I am blessed with this honor. And that reason or thing that this companion did 
But he said that I did not go to sleep without forgiving my brothers and sisters who might have harmed me. So if you would like to receive the blessings of the month of Ramadan, learn to forgive people. If you want to be amongst those who are from paradise, learn to forgive people. Because you cannot receive the blessings of Ramadan if you have not prepared your heart to forgive those who would have oppressed you. I'm not saying that they haven't hurt you or harmed you. I'm saying you have to learn to forgive them. Prepare for the month of Ramadan by fixing your relationship with your kinship, with your family members, with the family ties that you have. Prepare for the month of Ramadan by fixing that relationship. The Messenger وسلم, explained the virtue of this. That the virtue of someone who fixes or upholds his kinship, meaning the family ties between his extended relatives, his cousins, and everyone in his household. It's not someone who just does these, uh, you know, uh, family ties and keeps the family ties together just for the sake of doing it because there's a reward in for him or it's easy for them. In fact, it's the contrary. The Messenger وسلم, explains that the true test of kinship, of family ties, is when someone else has severed your ties. They're the ones who destroyed the ties. They're the ones who are fully in the wrong. They want nothing to do with you. But you still approach them and maintain that bond of kinship. So to prepare for the month of Ramadan, not only clean your heart of all malice and grudges, learn to fix your family ties even if it's not your fault. Learn to keep your severed family ties together even if it was all of their faults. Because come time of Eid, it's a day of celebration. You don't want to skip certain people's homes or not call certain people or text certain people because they've wronged you. So for you to receive the blessings of the month of Ramadan, you have to not only learn to forgive other people, but to maintain your kinship and family ties. Prepare for the month of Ramadan by fixing your marriages. The month of Ramadan is so special because we're all sitting together as a family. Sitting together, husband and wife, sometimes don't even talk together. The reality is sometimes you're not even sharing the same bed anymore. You know the realities. Takes this month of Ramadan to fix that. To realize that if your relationship is broken, it's not broken. That's how you're perceiving it, you're interpreting it incorrectly. Instead, realize that it is falling apart so that you can decide how to piece it back together. It is your opportunity to put the marriage back together how you want it. Not how the mother-in-law wants it, not how the family wants it, but how you want to fix your marriage or relationship. So piece that relationship back together for the sake of Allah. The Messenger وسلم, explains that every single morning, Iblis, the shaitan, has a morning meeting on his throne which is residing over a body of water. And in this morning meeting, he invites all of the shayateen and jinn, all of them, to come share what they have done to mislead mankind. So one shayateen or jinn comes up and says, I've done such and such. Saying a horrible act, saying an act that's so terrible. You're like, oh, that's horrible that they need to do such a thing. But the shaitan, at least, is not impressed. And then the jinn or shayateen comes and says that I made such and such do this, trying to gain the pleasure of the devil. And at least, not impressed. Until one jinn and shayateen comes and tells at least that I've caused a fight between a husband and wife. Iblis then says, come, you've done something good. Come sit next to me. He honors him. So if you're having marital problems, just know that it is indeed the shaitan who wants to destroy your marriages. So take this month of Ramadan. Prepare for it by anticipating the fact and owning the fact that there's something wrong within your marriage. But take this time to fix it and piece it back together. Prepare for the month of Ramadan by being a better child. 
by being a better son, by being a better daughter? How is it that you have chosen a video game over the voice of your mother? How is it that we have chosen a phone screen over the command or obedience of our parents? Do you not think that you will regret not hearing your mother's voice when she passes away? Do you not think that your eyes will regret rolling them at her when she told you to do something? When your eyes are filled with tears when you have to bury her, do you not think that you will regret? Do you not think that when it comes time for you to use the same two hands that never embraced your mother, never held her, that those same two hands are going to be the ones performing her janaza, putting her into the ground. Do you not think that you will regret? We know the answer. So why do you choose to live in regret right now? Why not prepare for the month of Ramadan by being a better son or daughter to your parents? Why not be a better or more obedient child to them? Your mom says to do something, go do it. Because one day she won't be around. One day she won't be there to be there for you and tell you to do something and you're going to regret every moment of not hearing your voice. Not hearing her voice of your dad. Those moments that you and your dad were bashing, bumping heads over what? Because you want to show your manhood? You're going to regret it when those same hands, those same arms are the ones taking care and wrapping your parents up and performing their husan. Don't wait for that time. Just know that when you are a good son or daughter and you're an obedient child to your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unlock your doors. So if you want your doors to be unlocked, be an obedient child to them. Because one day they will not be around. And the doors of barakah and those du'as will be officially shut. My brothers and sisters, I want to leave you off with this one final thing. I want you to treat this Ramadan in your mind, creating leverage. I want you to treat this Ramadan as if it was your last and final Ramadan. I want you to imagine that this Ramadan is all that you have and there is no other Ramadan. Imagine that after this month of Ramadan or during this month of Ramadan that you will not be here to see the next Ramadan. If that was the case, would you not take advantage of this month? Today, I find out that an uncle of mine has just passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. To Allah we belong and to Allah we shall return. My brothers and sisters, this dunya is not meant for us. Your parents are not yours, they belong to Allah. Your children that you have, parents are not yours, they belong to Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, He will call them back. And there's nothing you can do about it. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, He will call you back. And there's nothing that you can do about it. So don't waste your time. Don't live in regret. Don't wait for the next Ramadan because the next Ramadan isn't promised. Neither is this Ramadan that's happening in a couple of days. What is promised is this moment right now that we have. The future doesn't exist, but the present it now does. So my brothers and sisters, make a sincere intention right now as my voice is reaching your ears and inshallah your hearts to make this the best Ramadan possible by fixing your intentions right here and right now to do so. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to prepare for the month of Ramadan, for us to see the month of Ramadan, for us to be obedient children to our parents, for us to have obedient children as well if you are parents. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless those parents who have already passed away, our parents who have already passed away with a rawda, a garden of paradise inside of their graves. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kamil ujjid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barik ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kamil